All right, I've never done an unboxing video before, so let's do it. This video is sponsored by nobody, because I don't have any sponsors, but we are gonna be unboxing Synchro Bit. That's right, I picked up one of these in commerce yesterday, and we are gonna take a look at the entire process of unboxing it. Uh, we are going to look at the installation process. We are going to look at all the problems that occurred during it, some of them my fault. Uh, we're going to look at the dashboard for it. We are going to be looking at how to put it in the outdoor enclosure. And uh, yeah, then I'll, you'll hear my reviews and what I think of it at the end of the day. Let's do this. Okay, so first of all, I really wish this was wrapped in plastic. That way I know no one else had touched it. But inside, we got a quick start guide. Got to remember to use that. Uh, we also have the hotspot itself. It uh, looks nice, very square <laughs> um, on the back we have a micro usb b and uh looks like a 12 volt adapter reset switch ethernet yeah looks uh looks sturdy okay we have the outdoor enclosure as well very curious how we're going to uh put all the guts of the indoor enclosure into this outdoor enclosure but looks good happy with it what else do we got in here we uh oh there's the antenna Probably will never use this antenna. As you all know, I like to uh, use 8 dBi omnidirectional antennas by Rack Wireless. So that is probably what I'll end up using here. And, uh, oh, these, I think, are to tie the outdoor enclosure to something. We, uh, we won't worry about those. And inside here, we have the power adapter. And uh, that looks good. Oh, okay. It is power over Ethernet. We have a connection for the power over Ethernet to go to the hotspot, and we have one to go to the internet. Okay, and uh, there we go. We have our Ethernet cables for that. This is going to be interesting. I've never seen that before, but uh, yeah, looks good. Pretty happy. So uh, yeah, let's get started hooking it all up and uh, getting it up and running. Okay, so to begin, we just need to take the antenna and connect it to the back. You never want to power anything up without the antenna connected to it. Then we uh, need to attach the Ethernet cables, and we're going to pop this into the synchro bit. So like I said, uh, we connect the uh, hotspot directly into the PoE, and we then use the LAN port to connect it into the Ethernet, which I already have a cable for. Once these are connected, we can, well, go ahead and plug it in and get the show started. So let's plug it in and uh, yeah, let's turn it on. Initially, I thought having lights in the front like this to let you know what's going on was nice. For example, the blue light on the right side lets you know that connectivity for Bluetooth is available. So we can go into the Helium app and well, set this up. We're gonna click on the plus and then we can choose uh, a synchro bit. So I'm gonna look it up. There it is, I'll choose hotspot. That's probably the best option. And then from here, we're gonna go in and we're gonna skip for now. We're gonna understand, we're gonna power up and we're gonna scan for the hotspot. So it should be very quick to scan for the hotspot since it's well sitting right here. Once it finds it, we'll select it. We will connect to the hotspot and uh, you're gonna have to remember those numbers that it says there, but we'll talk about that a little later. At this point here, you do need to set up your Wi-Fi, and I don't know why, but when it's connected to the Ethernet was the only time that I could set this up correctly. So set it up now, and uh, at this point, I also decided not to assert my location yet. I just registered my hotspot. That was it. Okay, now this does take a few minutes, so like it said, feel free to leave and do something else. I wanted to make sure at least I knew the name of my hotspot at this point, and you can actually do that. It's not that complicated to figure out right now while it's still pending. But what you can do is you can go to your wallet, and you'll click on those uh, two arrows that go in different directions. So uh, using that, you'll be able to see that the hotspot is being added to the blockchain. It's in pending, and you'll see the name of what the hotspot will be. So that is pretty much the setup process. Now here's where I made the big mistake. Uh, where I made the big mistake was that I didn't follow the quick start guide and I didn't give the whole system about an hour to set up on its own. Because I didn't do that, the system still needed to sync and it kept, well, claiming that it had no internet. It gave me a red blinking flashing light that said error, no internet. 
Um, it did all of these things, especially in the diagnostics, to make me think there was something wrong, that I freaked out. I contacted support. Support told me I needed to assert my location. I asserted a location and didn't do anything. Then they told me I really just need to give it a couple hours. So I left to go install another hotspot somewhere else. That took me about four hours. And when I got back, everything was working. But um, I did totally freak out. So now that everything was working, I was able to access the dashboard. Now the dashboard requires that uh, eight digit serial number that I talked about earlier. Uh, when you check your network and see the name of the device, it uses that uh, with the CHAM dash in front of it. So that's how you can get that information and adding dot remotesb.com at the end allows you to access the dashboard. Now I believe that this access is local so you will only be able to get to it uh, either, well, on a hard line, to be honest, on something uh, on a computer that is uh, hardwired via Ethernet into your system. I have tried connecting to it via Wi-Fi. I cannot. So I'm not sure how useful this dashboard is going to be for remotely fixing problems. I've, I'm still researching that, but it does have some great information here, as you can see, showing CPU usage, memory storage, blockchain height, miner height. It gives a lot of information in the summary, which yes, I'm hiding right now. But on the left side, under system actions is the most interesting stuff. It has an option for onboarding right here, which you don't need if you've already onboarded, uh, to enable pairing again. In other words, instead of having a Bluetooth button on the back of the hotspot itself, you click enable pairing. There is a resync option, which I believe is uh, more like fast sync. I am not sure though, I have not tried it. Uh, there is a reboot, so if you do want to do a hard reset, you can, but let's be honest, this isn't a re really a hard reset because the system has not shut down completely. And then there's this troubleshooting option, which I thought was really cool, which goes through and checks all the hardware settings. So this could be really useful to just verify that everything is working the way it should. Now that being the case, uh, this system I've had on for uh, quite a while and I haven't gotten that many rewards from. I'm very concerned. I just expected that after let's say 18 hours I'd see more information or I'd have more rewards at this point and I don't and uh, just the amount of uh, time that I was making no HNT seems odd to me. Uh, that being said also uh, while I do have beacons I can't see them. I can see my witnesses uh, so I'm not sure what's going on here. Uh, now everything is relayed, so that could be part of the issue, but frankly, I just don't know. However, that's not going to stop me from putting this in the outdoor enclosure. So to do it, first of all, you got to take those little plastic uh, feet off out of the way so you can unscrew the whole thing and uh, obviously open it up so we can then take the guts out and put it in the outdoor enclosure. And I really want to do this because I want to be able to utilize this outside somewhere. One thing that I think that is really cool is that the new version 2 comes with a fan and a cooling system as you can see. Uh, so that definitely also makes me want to put this outdoors. So once you've opened up the top, obviously you got to disconnect the rest of the antenna. And then once that's done, we can start opening up the outdoor enclosure. Now the outdoor enclosure has two sections. One that's right here where you can connect to uh, all of the plugs and then we need to open up the back in order to put the guts in. Sorry if I'm just calling them guts. I know I could say electronics or something else but you know guts of the device. So uh, now that we're good to go here we could choose to leave the current light system set up but uh, I'm probably gonna take it off. I'm gonna take this uh, light strip and uh, just pull it off completely. But uh, you can see that there are little uh, sort of uh, claws on the edges that are keeping the uh, motherboard where it is. You gotta pop it out and then once you pop it out, like I said, you could switch out the light depending on if you wanna do it now or if you wanna do it later. It's really up to you, but uh, you're gonna wanna then pop it back into place like I'm doing now. 
And then at this point, you got to decide whether you're going to pull that light off or not. I'm just, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to pull the light off. And uh, there we go. Because like I said before, I hated the light. It was giving me the wrong information. And I don't need the wrong information. So that being said, we will put the connection to the antenna now back into place. And uh, it, it's harder than it looks. It, that was actually really tedious to tighten up. And then once that is tight and ready to go, we can then start, well, just screwing everything back in the way we had it before. The reason there are two sections like this is so you have an area to put all of your plugs in. And uh, then, of course, the area that is waterproof that is containing your motherboard. That being the case, while we're screwing it in here, uh, I'm eventually going to take that back off that brick there that looks like a big lego brick because i don't need it i as you know like to 3d print my own stuff and i'm gonna make my own mount for the antenna there for now though i am going to use a uh, antenna with a magnetic base so if you actually have something that's just sitting in your house a magnetic base is kind of a nice option to use if you're just dropping it somewhere the other thing I'm going to do is I need to get a separate 12 volt, uh, possibly 2 amp system. It says 12 volt 1 amp, but nice to have 12 volt 2 amp uh, for this. And as you can see, I'm not connecting anything via Ethernet. This is going to be Wi Fi, so that's why I need a new uh, 12 volt 2 amp power adapter. And uh, like I said before, also, I had a lot of problems with uh, connecting the internet. What I had to do, again, is have it connected via uh, Ethernet. Then during that time, I did a diagnostic and I reconnected it uh, via Wi-Fi. Then I unplugged the Ethernet, restarted it, and it connected to the Wi-Fi. That was the only way I could get it to work. And I don't know if there's any other way for you to get it working either. Uh, that said, by the way, uh, <laughs> I don't know why, but this one screw was really hard for me to put together. So uh, you're going to see me struggling with it right now. Also, those little uh, rubber pieces that I have not put in at the bottom, uh, it's been recommended you poke holes in them, that you cut a little slit in order to you know, keep the area tight to not let ants or insects get inside the enclosure. I have not done that here, but you know, I will eventually do something like that. Also, as I mentioned, I'm going to put my own connector on the back for a antenna. So yeah, got to remove it. Now, since I'm setting this up for outside, I'm going to put it on a light stand. Light stands are always cheap, and it's an easier way to mount it somewhere. Uh, I'm also going to, well, 3D print my own design here in order to mount it on the top of the stand. I don't sell these. I do offer the designs, though, for free online if you want them. Uh, I don't sell them right now. The fact is, my quality assurance for it is very horrible, so that's why I haven't. Now you can just mount the synchro bit with the two screws that it originally came with. Just screw them in the back as so, and uh, it should be nice and stable. Once you're done, you're still going to need to put the antenna on. Unfortunately for me, uh, I always zip tie my cables too early, and uh, that causes problems in trying to uh, get it through and connect it. But uh, once you have connected it, you're definitely done. And now we're ready to put it outside. Okay, I think we got everything. The hotspot and the antenna look good. I got my solar panel, I got my battery backup, I got my MiFi for internet, and we are going to get this baby remote. And if you'd like to see that video, please like and subscribe. I will let you know how it goes this week when I drop this somewhere. This is just my testing system so I can know what really does work in terms of placing it somewhere before I start building it. That being said, you could see that there were some issues going on with uh, SyncroBit. All in all, I think it's an interesting system, but if I can't uh, connect to it remotely in order to do diagnostics or uh, make changes like I can with SenseCap, not sure if I want to use it. Uh, but on an outside install of your house, using power over Ethernet may be a good option. Let me know what you think in the comments. Again, please like and subscribe, and happy mining.